Good morning, I'm Paul Jaffe from the Naval Research Laboratory and I'm going to share with you a vision for a transformational technology. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the Naval Research Lab, we've been a leader in space for over 70 years. We were the first to fly solar cells in space, we built and launched the first GPS satellite, and we discovered ice on the moon. Today, we are working with DARPA to revolutionize space operations through robotics. But first, let's take a step back. Every day, we are largely unaware. Our planet sits, uh, sits in space, surrounded by a force, by power. I'm not talking about the, the force from Star Wars. It looks like it's in a cold, dark vacuum of space, but in fact the Earth is constantly surrounded by energy, and this energy of course is in the form of sunlight. Now it's true that most of the energy we use today does not come directly from the sun, but it is undeniable that our society is fundamentally based on access to energy. So imagine what might happen if we had a clean, constant source of energy that we could direct at will to anywhere that it was needed. I'm not talking just about our cities, but also to our soldiers on remote mountaintops, or to farmers in the developing world, or to children whose villages have been destroyed by natural disasters. There is a way to do this, and it can be done with space solar. We can harness that energy that surrounds our planet. The sun provides in an hour more energy than we use in a year, but, and this is key, it does not shine at night. By capturing that sunlight in space where it is brighter than anywhere on Earth, unaffected by clouds or nighttime, and available 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, we can then send that power wirelessly to wherever it is needed on Earth. You can think of this as a sort of Hoover Dam in space. Now this approach supercharges the benefits of solar because it is always on. There's no other source that can send the energy globally like this. It's clean, constant, and global. Now you can imagine how this would revolutionize how we do military operations. It would enable more resilient and flexible architectures. If a base moves or closes, the energy could be sent where it's needed, when it's needed. And this would reduce our vulnerable supply lines that are subject to roadside bombs and insurgent attacks, saving both money and, most importantly, lives. Similarly, when disaster strikes, destroying power plants and existing infrastructure, we can get energy where it's needed quickly, providing quicker energy to power relief operations and field hospitals will also save lives. Likewise, in the developing world, there's an enormous need for reliable, steady sources of energy, which could be provided by space solar. This energy is a critical prerequisite to fight the problems of water scarcity, lack of education, poor health, unemployment, and political instability. If we were to provide energy to the world in this fashion, it would reframe our diplomacy, and we would be able to seize the lead in the emerging clean energy market. There are other benefits for a country that takes the lead. Clearly, establishing dominance in the critical technologies of energy and space is valuable in its own right, uh, but this would undoubtedly create countless jobs, spawn new industries, and have benefits for communications, for reconnaissance, for space exploration, and ultimately for space resource utilization. But perhaps above all, this would energize the spirit that America does incredible things, much as we were a beacon to the world when we first put humans on the moon. So you may ask, well, this sounds great. How come we have not done this before? And the answer is that there have been some stunning developments recently that now make this attractive from an economic, economical standpoint. The first is we've seen, in recent years, large and small companies alike changing the way we make satellites. Historically, satellites have been one-of-a-kind, artisanally crafted creations, and by now employing the true benefits of mass production, we're seeing the cost of spacecraft come down dramatically. 
Work at our laboratory and others has leveraged advances in materials and electronics and gossamer structures to increase the amount of power that can be sent from space per unit mass in a way that is, is game changing, that is a critical development for making this economically feasible. And today we see that there are not one but two companies that regularly launch and reuse their rockets, promising to unleash an era of new lower launch costs. Taken together, these things have changed the equation. And it is now a question not if, but when, space solar is competitive with our cheapest sources of energy. Already a case can be made that energy could be provided for a fraction of what we pay to deliver it today to some of our forward bases. Now, to move forward, there needs to be a broad-based coalition comprised not just of folks in the defense community, but also in the diplomatic and development communities. This is because this is a far-reaching concept that has implications for much of what we do. We can lead the engineering. There are already companies and governments domestically and abroad that are eager to start on this endeavor. And we can use existing models, the successful models we used either for the development of the global positioning system where the government saw the value, the need of having this resource and made the investments. And now today, each of you likely has a GPS enabled device, at least one, on your person. And I'll point out that you also probably have never paid directly a bill for GPS. We could also use a model like that from the communication satellite industry where President Kennedy and folks in Congress with the ComSat Act in the early 60s recognized that there was tremendous value if the government put in place the framework to develop this revolutionary capability. And now we enjoy satellite communication, satellite television without a second thought. And this is something that could only really have happened with the foresight and planning and framework development that came from government. Now, you may say, well, is this technology real? I've never heard of, of wireless power transmission. In fact, it is real. Japan, China, and many others have done very sophisticated demonstrations of wireless power transmission. We should build upon those to scale them up to the level that would be needed to send the power from space. And because this technology has a lot of heritage, it is possible to do this without tremendous costs or long durations. Naturally, we'll want to do a demonstration from space. We could leverage the International Space Station involving countries worldwide to do this. And then the lessons we learned from that would be levied to create a demonstration from low Earth orbit that could provide usable power to countries worldwide. This could be done within the next four years for about $350 million, which as a point of reference is the same amount that Americans spent annually on Halloween costumes for their pets. <laughs> The development phase would culminate with a pilot plant in geosynchronous orbit with the capacity to power the equivalent of 150,000 homes. This could be built within 10 years for about $10 billion or less than a quarter of the cost of the Three Gorges Dam. Now, it's true energy prices are low now because of the availability of finite fossil fuels. And it's a matter of time as to when they run out, whether it's 10 years or 100 years, they will run out. And when they do, our nation and our military must have a sustainable source of energy to turn to. We don't want to exchange our dependence on foreign oil for dependence on foreign space solar. There's no other source that is clean, constant, and globally transmissible, and essentially unlimited. It gives us the power to respond to disasters, to prevent wars, and to win the wars we can't prevent. We have a choice. We can settle while others surge, or we can boldly lead a truly transformational technology. You can play a part in this. Let people know that we have the opportunity to unlock a new era of energy. Let's lead and power a prosperous and secure future. Thank you.